Okay, so now we'll uh, this time we'll talk about the Chinese remainder theorem again, but a somewhat more constructive approach which allows us to systematically find a solution. Okay, so uh, I've now titled it the Chinese remainder theorem and the zero one idea. So we'll see in a minute that the zero one idea that we have looked at in various different contexts also has a nice application in in this particular problem. So here's the uh, here's the same question as last time. We said. Uh, so let, so except I'm going to do it a little more gently. So let x be any number between zero and seven, and y be any number between uh, zero and twenty. The question is find a number n between one and one sixty eight, such that n satisfies those two congruences, n is congruent to x mod uh, 8 and congruent to y mod 21. Okay, so now let us bring in our 0, 1 idea again. So this is the general problem we are trying to solve, but suppose we could do the following. Okay? So let us try instead to solve two problems. So suppose we could solve, well problem 1 which is I can find a n which is congruent to 1 mod 8 and 0 mod 21, okay. And so let me say, suppose I knew how to solve this and let me call that solution as n1. So call the this solution. as n1, okay. So similarly, let us say we can solve a second problem as well which is the congruence n congruent to 0 mod 8 and 1 mod 21 now, okay. And let us call again as I am saying let me assume I can solve this. So let me call this solution as n2. Okay, so suppose we could do these two problems, then the general problem is very easy to solve. Okay, so let us see why. Then consider how do you solve the general problem? Consider the following choice of n x times n1 plus y times n2. Okay, it is define n to be this and observe that you know what do you get when you when you look at the remainder of n, what is n congruent to modulo 8? That is really the question. So, observe n1 and n2. So, what are they congruent to mod 8? n1 is congruent to 1 mod 8 by construction, n2 is congruent to 0 mod 8. So, n will turn out to be congruent to x times 1 plus y times 0 mod 8. Here I have used the fact that n1 is congruent to 1 and n2 is congruent to 0. So why is this? This is by the properties of congruences that we talked about. So recall uh, congruences have these nice properties with respect to addition and multiplication. So how do I prove this for instance? So let me just sketch a proof of this. n1 is known to be congruent to 1 mod 8. So what I will do and x is congruent to x mod 8. So this is a trivial statement. I am not saying anything here. This just says that x and x leave the same remainder when divided by 8. It is more or less a tautology. So here are two congruences mod 8 and last time we had this property which said that when you have things like this you can multiply. x n 1 will therefore be congruent to x times 1. So x n 1 will be congruent to x times 1 mod 8. This is the property of multiplication of congruences. So that is how I concluded that the first term x n 1 is congruent to x mod 8. Similarly, the same logic applied to n 2 will show you that uh, y n 2 is congruent to y times 0 mod 8. Okay? Now, so what is this? This is just x, right? x into 1 plus y into 0 is just x. So therefore, x n is in indeed congruent to x mod 8. And by the same logic, if you look at congruences modulo 21, now you will get n 1 is congruent to 0 and n2 is congruent to 1. 
So that is again y, this is indeed equal. So n turns out to be congruent to y mod 21, okay. So the key point is of this is that to solve the general problem, it is actually enough if you can tol uh, solve two simple problems, one for uh, where you have a 1 0 for 8 and 21 and the other where you have a 0 1 for 8 and 21. This is the classic uh, 0 1 idea that we have been using in many contexts before. And in this case, let me just say uh, if you could solve these two, so le let us actually do it in this example. So the value of n1, so let me just tell you the value of n1. So this can be found by brute force, the value of n1 is 105. 105. So if you look back at that table that we, we wrote out in the very beginning last time, uh, where we tried to come do this by brute force, you will find that n1 equals 105 has the property that it is congruent to 1 mod 8 but 0 mod 21. Similarly, n2 which is congruent to 0 mod 21, uh, sorry this is congruent to 0, okay, n2 should be congruent to 0 mod 8 but 1 mod 21, so that is 64. So, n1 and n2 in this case turn out to be 105 and 64 and how do I obtain this for now? Well, if you think of it, it is just by trial and error, just brute force. But having gotten this, let us try and solve the problem from last time, okay. So now suppose I want to say I want to find uh, n which is congruent to 3 mod 8 and 10 mod 21 which is what we try to do. So in other words, x is 3 and y is 10. So what is the solution give us here? It says well since you know the solutions n1 and n2, the general answer is just given by xn1 plus yn2 which in this case is let us see x is 3 into 105 plus 10 into 64. which turns out to be 955, okay. So doing it this way produces the answer 955 and this may worry you for a minute because remember the earlier answer we got was 115 when we did by brute force but observe what we are getting by this method is just one solution, okay. So we are not necessarily getting the smallest natural number which solves this problem, all you are getting is some natural number or it could even be an integer if you know if, if we take negatives here, all you are getting is some integer which satisfies the system of simultaneous congruences. But that is not uh, you know too bad because we know how to get all solutions starting from any one solution, all you do is just add or subtract multiples of 168, okay. So if instead of any one solution you wanted maybe the smallest uh, natural number which satisfies this guy these two congruences, all you do is you just take 955, subtract out appropriate multiples of 168 and see what you get. So in other words, you find the remainder that you get when you divide 955 by, one, one, by 168, okay. And you will find that when you divide 955 by 168, so 840 is uh, 168 times 5. And so this is exactly 115 more than that. So 955 is in fact the same thing as 115 modulo 168, okay. So here is the other, here is the smallest natural number solution, just 115. So here is a second approach which allows us to solve the same problem. But still this requires one brute force step, right. How do you find n1 and n2? You now have two problems to solve. And if you are finally going to solve both of them by trial and error, this seems like it is actually more work than just trying to do brute force directly on the original set of congruences, okay. So this approach is, uh, is useful only if you can have a more systematic way of solving for n1 and n2, okay, without using a trial and error thing. So that is the approach I will describe next. So what we want is the following thing, we need a systematic or more algorithmic approach, systematic approach to find n1 and n2, okay. So in order to, to do this, uh, so let me just talk briefly about, so 
something called the Euclidean algorithm which may be familiar to you. So, what does a Euclidean algorithm do? So, let us just do it by example. So, given two numbers it finds their greatest common divisor ok. So, that is the uh, that is the point of the Euclidean algorithm. So, given two natural numbers we wish a and b it is an it is an algorithm which finds the greatest common divisor the GCD of a and b ok. So, what does the greatest common divisor mean? It just means well you do the following you take all natural numbers n which divide a and which divide b ok. So, such a thing would be called a common divisor numbers which are factors of both a and b and amongst the numbers in the set you find the maximum. So, it is a maximum number in the set of n such that n divides a and n divides b that maximum element is what is called the greatest common divisor of these two numbers a and b ok. So, now the Euclidean algorithm so let us apply it to the two numbers 8 and 21 that we started out with. So, recall 8 and 21 have no common factors. So, we already said that before in other words there are no common divisors. So, 8 and 21 if you look at what the common divisors are well you will only get 1 the number 1 of course divides everything. So, 1 will divide 8, 1 divides 21, but other than that there are not any other numbers n ok. So, the GCD of 8 and 21 is 1. So, sometimes we express this by saying they are relatively prime. So, now what does the Euclidean algorithm do ok? Given the numbers 21 and 8 and suppose you did not know to start with that they were relatively prime ok. You want to find their GCD in general given two numbers how do you find that GCD? So, here is what the algorithm says you perform a set of successive divisions. So, look at 21 and you divide 21 by 8 and find the remainder ok. So, 21 I divide 21 by 8 let us see what do I get 8 twos are 16 and I get a remainder of 5 ok. So, in other words this is the thing that we have been doing we have been writing 21 you write it as uh, some. So, let me just do this 21 can be written as 2 times 8. So, I divide 21 by 8 and I get a remainder of 5 ok. So, here is the, the remainder 5. So, now what do you do beyond this? Well, so what does the algorithm say? It says the following now instead of 21 and 8 as being the two players in the picture you now replace 21 by 8 ok. And think of 8 and 5 as being the two players in the picture ok. So, maybe I will just box this as well because that is going to be something that enters the algorithm now. So, I write 21 as some quotient times 8 plus a remainder and instead of thinking of 21 and 8 as being the, the two important entities I replace them by 8 and 5 ok. What does that mean? I divide 8 by 5. So, next step of the algorithm is the following you try to divide 8 by 5 and again find the quotient and remainder. So, 8 divided by 5 quotient is 1 remainder is 3 ok. Now, the same thing. So, whatever the two numbers on the right hand side 8 and 5 you divide the larger by the smaller. Similarly, I have 5 and 3 I divide 5 by 3 ok. So, I write 5 as I divide 5 by 3 find quotient to be 1 remainder to be 2 do it again to 3 and 2. So, I finally, get 3 is 1 times 2 plus 1 ok. And if I do it once more if I write 2 and 1 if I write 2 as some multiple of 1. So, I could do this once more I write 2 as some quotient times 1 plus a remainder, but now the remainder is going to be a 0 ok. So, you keep doing this algorithm. So, this is the Euclidean algorithm you keep performing successive divisions to find successive remainders. Now, finally, when the remainder becomes a 0, so at some point it will become a 0. So, what you do at that step is well you forget about that step you just look at what you got one step preceding to that ok. So, I forget the last step the preceding step there would have been a remainder that remainder is the GCD that is what Euclid's algorithm says. So, in this case the final non-zero remainder this fellow here is in fact the GCD of the two numbers. 
of you know 8 and 21 in this case or more generally if you had any a and b and you kept doing this algorithm again and again the final non zero remainder that you obtain is the gcd of the two numbers okay so that's the euclidean algorithm but you know what's the gcd got to do with trying to solve for these two congruences you know how do we find n1 and n2 from these congruences look at something more that you get from the euclidean algorithm so you should think of the euclidean algorithm as being a set of four such equations in this for this particular example okay there are four equations now the final equation which says that the gcd is a one so let me sort of read these four equations but from bottom to top okay so i turn the the sequence around i start from the from the end okay so i'll write one that was the last remainder as well what is it it's 3 minus 1 times 2 okay so i'm going to write the remainder alone on the right so i've now written 1 in terms of 3 and 2 okay so again now i i uh, i mean recall i'm trying to do this in reverse so 2 i will now replace with so instead of having 3 and 2 i will try and try and write things in terms of 5 and 3 okay those were the two players in the one preceding step and in going further i will replace 5 and 3 by 8 and 5 okay so i want to keep replacing uh, the the two active numbers by what was active one step preceding to that so what will i do i'll write this as 3 minus 1 times so i will read my equation you know the the one preceding equation said that 2 uh, okay so maybe i should just uh, maybe i will do it on this board okay where it's easier to also see the original sets of equations so i start from the last equation i write this as 1 equals 3 minus 1 times 2 and so going one step further the 2 i will write as 5 minus 1 times 3 okay so this would be written going you know, equal to here the 3 i will leave as it is minus this 2 i will write as 5 minus 1 times 3 okay or 5 minus 3 so this expression let me simplify a little bit what's this this is uh, uh, 3 plus 3 so it's 2 times 3 minus 5 okay so now i have written the one the final gcd in terms of 3 and 5 okay so now again i will go further i will replace the 3 in terms of whatever i get one step before to it so the 3 for instance here is 8 minus 5 so i will replace the 3 like that i'll write it as 2 times 8 minus 5 minus 5 so let's simplify it's uh, 2 into 8 minus 2 into uh, 3 into 5 so it's 2 times 8 minus 3 times 5 okay. so last step i will replace the 8 and the 5 by the 8 and the 21 in other words i will write the 5 as 21 minus 2 times 8 so let's do that it's 2 times 8 minus 3 times 5 becomes 21 minus 2 times 8 okay so this is the just the euclidean algorithm in reverse where the idea finally is to write the gcd back in terms of the original two numbers so what is this so let's simplify this a little bit this is uh, 2 into 8 uh, plus 6 into 8 so this is 8 times 8 minus 3 times 21 so finally what do i get i get the the following equation when i finish this euclidean algorithm in reverse it just says that the gcd 1 is actually the following combination it's 8 times 8 minus 3 times 21 okay observe i've done this completely systematically i i don't i didn't know, need to know what these numbers a and b were this procedure can be programmed on a computer for instance so all it's saying is just keep going backwards one step at a time substituting you know the variable that you don't want or the number you don't want in terms of the numbers that you do want so finally so observe this is of course now 64 minus 63 that's indeed one okay so we managed to write one in this way so now what's so great about uh, being able to write one in this fashion the reason why we did all this so finally here's what we obtain it's eight times the number eight minus 3 times the number 21 
So, let me think of this as plus 3 times minus 21, okay. 3 times or plus minus 3 times 21. So, I am writing 1 as a sum of these two numbers 8 times 8 plus minus 3 times 21. Now, here is what we will do define n 1 to be this number. So, remember we are trying to find n 1 and n 2 the, the solutions to those two congruences. The claim is you can take n 1 to be just this number and n 2 to be this number. Okay? So, that is a claim for now let us try and prove this. So, why is this in fact true? Proof. So, let us see what property did n 1 have to satisfy. So, let us just do it in this example, but you will see it is actually more generally true. n 1 was supposed to be uh, divisible by, so let us see which way was which, n 1 was supposed to be divisible by 8 and n 2 was divisible by this. So, let me call this as n 1 and this as n 2. Okay. So, let us see what properties, let us look at n 2 first. So, what properties that does n 2 have? n 2 is just 64 in this case, it is congruent to 0 mod 8 and 1 mod 21. Okay. Why is it 0 mod 8? Because it is a multiple of 8, that is more or less clear. Why is it congruent to 1 mod 21? Well, when you divide 64 by 21, you get 63 as the quotient, right? And there is a 1 left over, okay? And that is exactly what is happening here because there is a 63, you know, that is the part that is divisible by 21, and then that is the 1 that is on the other side, okay? So, when you divide this number n1 by 21, because this is a multiple of 21, what is left will always be a 1, okay? So, it is kind of by design. So, n2 satisfies these two congruences. Similarly, let us put n1 n 1 in this case is uh, minus 63. Okay. So, observe it is not a positive number, it is a negative number, but nevertheless it is a solution to the set of congruences. So, minus, uh, so this is a multiple of 21, 0 mod 21, because after all it is minus 63, right? it is minus 3 times 21, but here is the interesting part, it will surely be 1 mod 8. Why is that? Because minus 63, think of it as minus 64 plus 1. So, this is here is a multiple of 8 which is minus 64 and you are adding a 1 to that. So, the remainder on division by minus uh, by 8 is in fact a plus 1. Okay? So, if you take this first fellow as n 2 and the second fellow as n 1, they automatically satisfy the two, the, the two congruences that you require of them. Okay? n 2 satisfies this 0 1 congruence and n 1 satisfies the, the 1 0 congruence. And this is a general fact, no matter which a and b you start with, provided you know instead of 8 and 21, you start with any two relatively prime numbers, things which do not have a common factor, perform the Euclidean algorithm on them, you finally obtain the GCD, you run the Euclidean algorithm in reverse to obtain an expression where the GCD 1 is written as some multiple of the number a plus some multiple of the number b, then this, this you know, you pick one of the factors as n 1, the other factor as n 2, they will always satisfy, they will be these 0 1 solutions, okay? these uh, the solutions to the 1 0 and the 0 1 congruences. This is a completely general fact and a completely systematic way of finding the solutions n 1 and n 2. So, now in this case, you know, what are the two solutions? One of them n 1 is minus 63 and the other is 64, right. So, those are the two solutions in this particular example. Now, these solutions from before. So, and you know these two things were things we found by trial and error. Now, here is solutions which we are going to find by our systematic procedure, the Euclidean algorithm approach. So, here is the Euclidean algorithm provided solutions. The Euclidean algorithm says n 1 is uh, n 1 is the number minus 63 and n 2 is the number uh, 64. Okay. This is what the Euclidean algorithm gives. Now, comparing with what we had before, okay, observe we had written out two solutions by trial and error, but again, you know, so what is the difference? n 2 is the same, but n 1 seems different. Right? The trial and error method said that n 1 is 105, but this said this is minus 63, 
But again, note that this is only one solution and to get any other solution all you need to do is you know going from here to here you can add any multiple of 168 to get a new solution. So, minus 63 you add 168 to it that is exactly going to give you plus 105. So, how do you go from this Euclidean solution to the trial and error solution? Well, you just add 168 and that is of course, something we know you can always do. Okay? So, uh, this is just this sort of concludes this idea. So, we have, we have done two things really. One is we have reintroduced the 0 1 idea in this context and seen that it, it actually has a very nice application to this problem. Secondly, we have used the Euclidean algorithm to give a systematic solution of the 0 1 problem. Okay, often it is not the fact that the 0 1 problem gives a solution that matters, you know that that is there in many contexts. It is being able to write easy solutions to 0 1 problems that has been something we have used again and again. In the Lagrange interpolation method for instance, the 0 1 problem has a very easy solution because of those special form of the Lagrange polynomials, right product of all the x minus uh, x 1, x minus x 2 whatever divided by something. Uh, that is something we could get by using properties of polynomials. In the example when we talked about 3 dimensional vectors and the 0 1 idea, we were able to solve the 0 1 problem more or less by using the cross product of vectors. Okay. So, the cross product came in handy there and allowed us to give quick solutions of the 0 1 problem. Here, the solution of the 0 1 problem comes through the Euclidean algorithm okay, and you need to do whatever we said, run it in reverse to do this and then you are done. In one step, you get the 0 1 problem. So, all of this for instance can be programmed on a computer in a completely systematic fashion and would not require any guessing or trial and error. 